Objections. I hate them. <laughs> but it's part of the process. So in this video, we're still covering more ways that's going to help you sell more jewelry while working on a cruise ship, and you are going to eventually handle some objections. This is something you cannot escape, so do expect them. Now, when it does come down to any objection, the two things for you to really remember is it comes down to two reasons why a person will not buy from you. Either they don't love the piece or it's the price. It's one or the other. The way of a person verbalizing it though might be different from individual to individual. Let me share with you some of the most common objections you're going to hear, for example. Oh, I need to go talk to my wife, my husband, my sister, my mother, my cousin, my uncle, my someone. Like there's, they're missing someone that they are going to say, I need to go and talk to them before I make a decision. Another thing might be, I just want to think about it. You know, it's the first day of the cruise. You know, I don't want to make a rash decision. I'm not one of those people that make decisions on the spot. I always think about these things. Or it might be like, I did not plan on it. Most people do not plan on buying jewelry whilst they are on a cruise vacation. So that is another common one you're going to hear. Or it might be, it costs more than the cruise. So you're going to hear more of them as well. And scroll on down into the comments and leave for me the most common objection you hear as well. But just as a few little examples, let's see how you can handle some of these and what it really comes down to with some role playing with me, myself and I. <laughs> <laughs> Three different personalities. Uh, now, first of all, it might be the missing partner. Now, if it is the missing partner, let's say it is the wife and you're trying to sell something to the husband uh, and you're trying to sell something to the husband that he's going to buy for his wife. Now, for example, they might just say, oh, I need to go speak to my partner before I make a decision. And you would go along these lines. Absolutely. You know what? I totally agree. And what is your partner's name again? It's Mary. Excellent. So how long have you been like, how long have you been married for? Wow. 15 years. Well, since you've been married for 15 years, I'm sure you know Mary really well, right? They're going to say yes. Well, that's great. So just as a little example though, let's say if Mary was here, what do you think she would say? Yes or no? And then if the person says, well, I think Mary would say no, then you would respond by saying, oh, would you say, do you think she would say no to the price or no to this piece? And then you really get back to the nitty gritty, the important part, the part that really actually matters when making a decision. It's either back to the price or back to the piece. Uh, now you could play that off the same way with, I need to think about it. Now if the person says, I need to think about it, you would reply by going, absolutely, I agree. You know what? Most people really do like to think about these things before making a decision, especially on something as valuable as jewelry. Now, most people, when they do say, I want to think about it, normally need to think about two things. Would it be okay if I share these with you? you wait for the yes. Okay, most of the time, it's either they're needing to think about the price of that piece of jewelry or those pieces of jewelry, or it's the piece, like you're not too sure if you're going to wear it. So what one is it that you're really thinking about? Now, that way, you continue. <laughs> You see, you can always bring it back to the price or the piece once again, or I did not plan on it. Absolutely. You know what? Most people do not plan on buying jewelry while they are here on a cruise vacation. But the reason why many people end up purchasing jewelry whilst they're on a cruise is because they find something as beautiful as this. Now, <laughs> that's a way of, you know, continuing it though as well. Uh, and then going back into the clothes where it's going to come back down to realistically again, the price or that piece. Now, as I said, the list goes on though. Leave some of your most common objections that you hear down on the bottom. Just scroll on down and leave those down in the comments. Uh, and I'll reply as well and let you know how I would go about handling those. Now, if a person does say it is the price, when they say it is the price, don't automatically go to a lesser item, an item that costs a lot less, and then present that to them. When they mention, oh yes, it is the price that's preventing me from going ahead today, ask them, what would you feel comfortable spending on a piece of jewelry like this? 
Now, this might seem like a question that's a little bit forward to ask. The reason why you need to ask this question is maybe that person would verbally say, oh, you know what, I'm comfortable spending about three, three and a half thousand dollars. And you're showing them something that's 10 or $20,000. So that way, you know, okay, great. Now I have an idea of what price range they're going to be comfortable with. What can I show them that looks similar to the item that you're showing them at the moment, but that is in that lower price category. Instead of you just thinking, oh, oh my gosh, it's too expensive. Let's go to the cheapest item. And you try to then present something to them that's $300 instead of three and a half thousand dollars. There you end up leaving money on the table. So ask them, what would you feel comfortable investing? What would you feel comfortable spending on a piece of jewelry like this? Now, if you do feel like you need to provide the reason why you're asking that question, then the reason would be, well, uh, I'm just wanting to make sure that I would show you something that you're comfortable spending, as in that amount. So that way, you know, really hard to talk about pricing. Uh, when it comes back down to the piece, if the person says, oh, you know what, I'm just not sure if I would end up wearing that. That is great. That means you can move on to finding another piece of jewelry and ask them, like, what do you not like about this piece? That way they can provide you with information about what they don't like. Maybe it's too many diamonds. Maybe it's too blingy for them as well. Uh, however they describe the parts they don't like, make sure to listen in closely and make sure to know your inventory of what you have in the store. This way you can then move straight on to showing them another piece and then working on building that up and then closing again. Uh, or maybe it's one of the pieces of a set that you're presenting to them. Maybe they like other pieces pieces in that set. So then you would go along the lines of, well, is it just the ring that you don't like or do you not like the whole set? That way you might be able to work on the bracelet, you might be able to work on the earrings, or you might be able to work on the pendant. It doesn't just mean if they say, oh, I'm not sure if I would wear it, that they wouldn't wear the whole set of jewelry. Maybe they like one piece in that set or two pieces in that set as well. So you still have something to work, work on instead of moving into finding another piece to then present and sell to that customer. Now, hopefully this helps out. Make sure to click on to the next video so you can see how to sell more jewelry whilst working on a cruise ship.